Should you caulk your baseboards to the floor? Let's find out. Hi friends, welcome to Fix This House. If you're new to the channel, consider pressing the subscribe notification bell so you can always be in tune on DIYs, how-to videos, and product reviews that I do within this channel. So this is a very controversial topic and a lot of people ask me this question, should you caulk the baseboard to your floor? What if it's a floating floor? What if it's tile? And so forth. Well, in my honest opinion, there's pros and cons of doing this. So one good thing of caulking your baseboard to your floor is take a closer look. Let me show you this right here. Notice that you have a 1 8 inch gap between this floating floor and this baseboard. Well, maybe you transitioned from a carpet and you decided to put hardwood floors or a floating floor, this vinyl plank flooring. You're definitely going to have some kind of gap between there, especially if the person who installed it didn't end up taking off your baseboard. What do you do when you fill this up? Well, you end up using caulk. By using caulk, you can definitely accomplish a nice flush look from your baseboard to your floor, but you can't just use any type of caulking. Make sure you stay tuned throughout this whole video and I'll show you some tips and tricks on how you can caulk your baseboard to your floor to have that nice clean line and make it look professional. Now there's a lot of caulking types in the market right now, but for home inside use, I like to use this DAP stretch caulking. This is my number one go-to because it stretches a lot and it allows for expansion and contraction, especially when you have floating floors or hardwood floors. Over time, that floor is gonna move back and forth, side to side, and you wanna have a nice caulk that can withstand that expansion and contraction. So here's another great advantage of caulking your baseboard to your floor. Now don't mind the wall, this is gonna get refinished. I don't like the texture on this. Previous owner did a very bad job on texturing this. I'm just gonna take out this baseboard and you see this right here? There is a gap from your drywall to the bottom of the floor. Now you never wanna put your drywall flush or touching the subfloor. That's why there's always a gap there. This being an old house, there's a lot of tiny little crevices where insects could get into, especially under here. You see there's an eighth inch gap. Sometimes this is a quarter inch gap if you take out your baseboard. So what if this wall was your outside wall, meaning that this is the wall that's from, you know, outside your home. And let's just say that you have a lot of work done, you had some cable drilled onto your wall. Chances are, if they didn't fill on those holes or those gaps where they ran the cable from the outside, there are chances that bugs or spiders could come inside your wall and start coming out of here. So that actually, is an experience of mine. We had all these holes outside the out of the house of this wall and bugs started coming out of here, you know, spiders or whatnot. So if you had baseboard installed, so this got water damage, don't mind that. So let's say that you have this installed and this is not caulk, there are chances that ants, bugs could make their way out of this hole right here. You don't want bugs coming in. So by caulking this gap right here, and caulking on top of here, of course, you will have no pests or bugs coming out of these crevices. Also take note that there's many different types of colors when, when it comes to caulking. Um, I suggest that you use different types of colors and play around depending on what color your floor is. If you have oak, if you have a brown color floor, maybe you can consider using brown caulking. If you have gray floors like this, maybe you can consider using gray caulking. But in this case, I only have white caulk, so that's what we're gonna use on today's video. So you can kind of see what it looks like and what the lines will look like after we finish this video. So here's another situation where you should caulk the bottom of your baseboard to the floor, especially if you have tile. So this is just a mock-up anyways, I just wanted to demonstrate this, that if you have tile, especially in your bathroom where everything gets wet, I have kids, so they play with water all the time and it gets all over the floor. You definitely want to go and start caulking where the baseboard and the tile meet so that you don't get any water through there. And especially bathrooms, they are notorious for getting water and mold. So for bathrooms, you want to get caulking that is mold resistant. But yeah, definitely on bathrooms and any areas that you think will get wet around kitchen areas. I know vinyl plank flooring that I have is waterproof. so. But still, I want to be able to caulk that in around my kitchen area, especially in case there's some spillage or some splatter on the sink. You definitely want to assess those areas where you know that it's potential to get wet and caulk those areas on your baseboard. So with that being said, friends, let me show you how to properly caulk the bottom of your baseboards to your floor. Before you even do this job, you want to prepare your baseboard and mask off anything that you don't want caulk to get onto. Now, let me also take this into account that 
You can also use shoe or quarter round to put this in, but even if you put shoe or quarter round to fill in these gaps, you're still gonna have little tiny crevices on there. That's why you wanna finish it off with a little bit of caulk. You can use just regular masking tape or frog tape. Frog tape is best if you're using for painting, but since we're just using caulk, it's a little bit thick, so we're just gonna just use this regular masking tape. I like to run the masking tape less than an eighth to the baseboard bottom. Now, since I am using white caulk, it's gonna look weird if I make it far, like about a quarter inch far or half inch. It's gonna look like it's just doesn't, it's just not gonna look right for some reason. That's why I wish I had gray caulk to match the gray floor so that it kinda blends in so you have that nice crisp line. Since I'm just doing this for instructional purposes and I only have white caulk anyways. Now you're probably wondering, what is this at the end of my caulk tube? Now this is what I call a caulk cap. I made a separate video on this and it works really well. And this has been here for months and this still works like it's new. Once you're done using your caulk, you just put it over like that and it works amazing. You can reuse it over and over. And if you're interested on this caulk cap and any types of tools I used it in this video, this dripless caulk gun, I'll leave all the links on the description down below. Check out those links if you're interested key tip of having good caulk application is to cut a very small tip with a small amount. You can apply a little and then let it sit for a little bit and you can apply a second or third round or sec third coat onto the area that you're applying. That's the key tip of having a good caulk job is to not rush it. Now if you want to be a pro caulking master, I made a pro tips and tricks video. Check out this video up here. When you're, well, of course, after you finish watching this video, applying a very small bead, like so. Let's apply a second one. Notice how I barely put any effort on that one and it made a nice, clean, crisp line. Just wet my hands with spray. Okay, and run it like so. So notice how I barely have anything on my finger. That means I got to apply a little bit more. Kind of messed up on that one. I went a little bit over the baseboard. Spray my hand a little bit, make it nice and damp. And we're going to run it just like this. There we go. Now look at the excess that we took out. Notice how you save so much on the caulk. You don't have globs at a time whenever you run and pass it. When we take this out, like that. This is what I was trying to mention to you friends earlier about having different types of color on your caulk. If you do use a gray caulk or brown caulk or clear caulk, you can probably match it a little bit better rather than just using white. Now this is not bad at all, in my honest opinion. It looks like it's still part of the baseboard and it looks still clean. Notice that if you don't use masking tape, it's gonna be all over the place. Okay, friends? Now let me show you that example. Like this, I'm spread it like this. Now it doesn't look bad, but if you look closer, there is a little bit of tiny lines of caulking right there. I like It's like a fading effect on the edges what it looks like before with the tape and that's without the tape this is what it looked like before now this is what it is with the caulk now i'm not gonna lie it looks pretty good it looks like it's a mini quarter round it's totally up to you it's all subjective it's all what you think looks good so now that we're done using our caulk gun i am a big advocate of these caulk caps just put it right over easy and you can store these for many years to come. Now we just let it set and let it dry for a few hours and then you're ready to paint. Just make sure that the caulk that you're using says it's paintable. Now the main purpose of us using this caulk is to prevent water from going through the baseboards on wet areas, bugs going in and out of your baseboards, and definitely for at least aesthetic wise too. Depending on where you live, check out with the codes if it is okay to caulk under your baseboards. But again, it's your house. You can do whatever you want on it. I don't think that there is a violation just by applying caulk on your baseboard. It's no hazard or anything like that. Now the con part is like what I mentioned, the expansion and contraction. If you use the wrong type of caulk that doesn't stretch, 
you can possibly have a little bit of cracking and it will start coming out. So make sure you take account of that. So friends, I'm very curious. Let me know in the comment section down below if you have experienced any issues with these gaps on your baseboards, if you have any bugs or water leaks or mold that happened in the past. And if you end up using this method or any type of method, please share with the community and leave the comment down below. And again, friends, if you found this video super helpful, please hit that big thumbs up, press the subscribe and notification bell, and I'll see you friends on the next video.